We have the wisdom that can disciple a city. We have the grace that humbles states. We are the hands that can heal the country. We are the songs that can lift up the nations. We are the sermons that can strengthen the world. We are a congregation taking ministry beyond the wall. is this standing across this building Lord how we bless your name today Lord how we celebrate you today we look to you God as the author and the finisher of our faith we pray God that you would prepare the ground to receive your word we pray God that this word the seed of life will be deposited into each of our lives. Not only will it be deposited, God, but that it will take root, begin to germinate and grow. We pray, God, that it will produce and yield fruit, fruit that will be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. It is in Jesus Christ, the Savior's name, we pray. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to a familiar Old Testament passage of Scripture. Just before you get to the book of Matthew, turn to me, with me to the book of Malachi, the third chapter. Malachi, the third chapter. We want to begin at verse 8, and we will climax and conclude at verse 10. We're going to tread some very familiar waters today. And I need your open, your open thinking and your minds and your hearts. One of the things that I've learned in preaching is you don't have to create anything new. We just got to say what God has already said. So we're not going to try to create any new doctrine today. We are simply going to share what God has already said. Matthew the third chapter beginning at verse 8. Climaxing and concluding. Matthew the, Malachi. Malachi. Thank, oh, we got some folk listening today. Praise the Lord. Malachi the third chapter beginning at verse 8. Climaxing and concluding at verse 10. This is the word of the Lord. Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse. The whole nation of you. Because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe. Tell your neighbor the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house test me in this says the Lord Almighty and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it I'm going to read it one more time let that last part catch you real fast Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I want to talk today about the habit of systematic giving. The habit of of systematic giving for the grass withereth and the flower fades but the word of our Lord shall truly stand forever in this house right now I know I look into the faces and into the eyes of men and women who are at a much better financial position than they have ever been before in their lives. So much so that some sit today and say, I never would have imagined that I would be able to live like I do. 
There are folk in here right now who say mama and daddy and them never had it quite this good. As a matter of fact, this same time last year, you wasn't living quite as good as you are right now. But because of God's grace, his mercy, and his favor, God has done some miraculous things in your life and for you as a result of your faithfulness towards him. There are men and women in this house right now who God has blessed with businesses and blessed with opportunities beyond their own imagination. Some had only written some stuff down on paper, but God messed around and brought it off the paper and brought it into manifestation. Some things have shown up in your life that you only thought that if you wrote it down that maybe one day, I don't know when, but maybe there's a possibility that I could maybe work there. But God said, I don't want you to just work there, but this is going to be yours. That because of faithfulness, yeah. all right, all right, all right. God began to establish you. But I know in this house today that there are folk in this house who got to ask these couple of questions, and I'm going to get right on out of your way. Some are asking the question today, saying, Pastor, how can I give to God and save at the same time? Well, I, my response would be to you, you can't save if you don't give to God. There is no way that you are going to be able to save anything if you don't first make God your priority. Because as God just has a way. It just has a way of getting from you that which you try to hold back from him. Oftentimes it's not even God messing with your finances. It's not God messing with your stuff. But the hot water heater goes out. The radiator, hater, the radiator catches a hole in it. You end up with a few flat tires. The transmission goes out. The roof starts to leak. All sorts of stuff just break out in your life because we hold back on God. You don't have to say amen, but I know I'm in the room. There's some, been some times when I said, well, God, I'll catch you next week. And before next week showed up, all this other stuff had broke loose. And I had to go ahead and start bringing out monies. That if I had only, as, as I think back now, if I had only given to God yeah. what was rightfully his in the first place, yeah. Yeah. maybe I wouldn't have ended up in that situation. Yeah. 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 You know, from the responses that I hear, many people feel that they say, you know, you either give to God and not have, Come on, or you keep what you have and you don't give. Okay, I'm gonna say that one more time. A lot of folk, a lot of folk have in their mind, they say either you give to God and you don't have, or you keep what you got and don't give to God. Statistically, you know, I like numbers and I like looking up stuff. Statistically, in America, the average Christian, the average Christian, the one who carries their Bibles, the one who comes to church routinely, the one who profess and prays loud and sing hard, the average Christian gives 1% of their gross earnings to the church. The average believer gives 1% of their gross earnings to the church. And see, that's gone down over the last 15 years because 15 years ago, according to the Gallup polls and Barnes research, Barnes research, we were given 3%. But over the last 15 years, we've dropped from 3%, you know, Bible packing, tongue talking, scripture quoting folk. We've dropped from 3% down now to 1%. You hear a lot of people complaining about the church. But I've come to realize the people that complain most about the church are the ones that do the least for the church. You ain't got to say amen. But, but, but the ones that complain the most about the church are the ones that do the least for the church. And, and watch this. They complain to folk who do nothing for the church. Because folk who really love their church don't spend their time complaining, but they spend their time trying to figure out another way that they can help their church do just a little bit better. Preach, Pastor. So we have to watch and, and, and begin to listen and, and see what it is that folk are saying. But you know, for, for one to give, all right, all right. they really must possess a mind and a willingness to give. You know, some people give because they asked to give. 
Some give because they are required to give. You know, well, if you don't give, you can't serve in this capacity. And because you want a title or a position, then you, you give grudgingly. And then there are those who give because they put on the spot. You know, when you put them on the spot, well, I need a I need hundred folk to give $500 and you don't want to be embarrassed, so you stand up. And, and then you you know you you walk down and, and and give and knowing that he asked for five hundred but you bring in fifty but you want to stand up to look like you bring in so you know uh huh. <laughs> Some folk give because you just put them on the spot, but then there are folk who give because they have the right attitude. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about giving. I'm going to talk about giving for the rest of this month. And I'm going to talk about giving again in July. I may hit it sometime in between that if we don't really grab hope to it. Because we got to understand that until we get it in our mind to do what God says that we ought to do according to his word, we're not going to see the situation changing. We, we, we find that, watch this. Many, I understand that many folk give because they like to see, they like to make other folk happy. Then there are some folk who give simply because they enjoy giving. And then there are those who give because they simply give because the word of God says give. Now I know everybody in here don't like this kind of preaching and teaching. Because it hadn't been taught routinely in our local churches. Because see most of us have been brought up in churches that are always raising money for something. You know, we 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 raising money for this special offering, this special offering, and this special offering instead of teaching yeah, yeah, yeah. and developing believers with good, healthy, consistent giving habits. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just believe that if we can teach our folk to have good, healthy, consistent giving habits, Brother Billy, we won't need another uh, uh, oh, campaign to run for this and a campaign to run this and a run this one for three months and do, do another pledge period. We won't need to do that if we just teach folk good, healthy, consistent giving habits. Amen. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying there should be a, an establishment of holy, systematic Giving. Amen. Let me help you with this systematic thing. The scripture says, on the first day of the week. Yeah. Now, watch this now. He says, on the first day of the week, set aside this amount that you're going to bring and give unto the Lord. Now, this speaks to not only giving. Watch this now. But it also speaks to church attendance. Because the majority of us, some 99% of us know that if we don't show up, we ain't going to send it. So when he speaks to set aside that on the first of the week and then bring it to the house that there will be no need for collection when he comes he's also speaking to the fact that we got to show up and be ready and prepared to serve wherever service is needed see our set aside gifts are not to be given to our local glee club our set aside gifts are not earmarked for our fraternities or sororities. Our set aside gifts are not meant for our local travel agent for our upcoming vacation. Our set aside gifts are meant for God. You know, it, it amazes me. It amazes me that folk who, when you always need, and this ain't on my paper, but I'm going to give it to you because it's good. When, when, when folk, when you're always asking them to help out the church and help us do this and help us do that, they always say, well, I can't. I ain't got it. I, I would if I could, but they're the ones who can always go on vacation. Can always go down to the local club. Can always go down for happy hour. Can always run down to this and run down to that. But whenever we need a little help in God's house, Oh, I, I would pass it, but I, I just ain't got it. I just, just ain't got it. Now, you ain't got to like it. You ain't got to like it, but I know I'm telling the truth. You know, many of us have come from begging churches. Where the pastor uses the old pressure techniques in giving. I know, I know it. I've been there. I've seen it. I've, I've witnessed it myself. I'll be like, are you serious? Are, are you serious? Are you, you, are you going to... 
talk, talk down to me that much to make me think? Oh, are you serious, man? I know, I know a little bit about the word. That ain't what God's word says. You know, we say stuff like, I know you've been praying for such and such, and, and if you bring this money down here, God's going to do it for you. Now, these same folk that jump up and bring that money in, are the same folk that sit under the word that says bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse and prove me now herewith said the Lord of hosts but they won't bring it in but because reverend said it because reverend was all charismatic and he was smooth and he was a great presenter now all of a sudden they jump up but they said what God's word they said God's word wasn't enough for them they needed somebody to impress them with some type of vernacular But you know what this does, y'all? This kind of old backwoods tactics. It, it keeps us undisciplined. It keeps us unstructured. And we don't follow a pattern of regular giving to the church. Which then passed the guy to come back then with one of them old tactics. But you know what? Paul encourages the church to establish a holy pattern of systematic giving every week and he says don't do it sporadically but do it every week don't do it just when you feel like it but do it every week don't do it when you see pastor present but do it every week don't do it when your favorite choir not singing but do it every week because that's your reasonable service. But you know, if you give the right way, and if you give with the right intention and the right motivation, it keeps us from making statements like, well, the, you know, the church, all the church wants is your money. If you give the right way and with the right motivation, it keeps you from saying that, well, you know, pastor, just, he just wants your money too. But you know, one of the one of a great passage of scripture that parallels the great example of giving, we, we you hear it said all the time, is Luke 6 38. All right, all right. Wonderful passage of scripture. It parallels a great example of God's concept of giving. He says, if you give, all right, all right. you will receive. If you give, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full measure. Press down, shaken together to make room for more. And running over whatever measure you use in giving large or small it will be used to measure what is given back to you but let me put a pin there for some folk who think just because you gave a hundred that you're supposed to get a hundred plus back you might have given a hundred in cash but you might get a hundred and fifty in joy yeah. You may have given 75 in a check, but you may get 200 back in peace. You may have given, you may have given 200 in cash, but God may restore your health. God said that if you give it, whatever God says you're in need of, it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, making room for more. But see, we try to pigeonhole God. And make God feel that he's got to give us back just what we want. God gives us back what he wants us to have and what we need. You know what I come to understand real fast is that the ministry of giving goes beyond you and me just giving. It's more so about obedience and faith. I'm going to say that one more time. The ministry of giving goes beyond just giving. It's about obedience and faith. See, tithing is all about you and me just trusting God. To be perfectly honest with you, God can do without my little bit that I give. Maybe I'm talking to the wrong bunch. Let me say it one more time. God can actually do without the little bit that I give, but God says, I just want to know that you trust me enough that if you give that of which I have required of you, that you trust me enough to know that I'm going to supply every one of your needs. It's about obedience and faith. It ain't about your money. Oh, I know I'm in the house today. I know I'm in the house today. It's not my little bit that I give. It's not going to put another gold, street of gold up in heaven. 
It's not going to build another pearly gate. It's not going to make another wall of jasper. God wants to know that I trust him enough to supply all of my needs, that I trust him enough to keep on waking me up, that I trust him enough to keep shelter over my head, that I trust him enough. The question today is how much do you really trust him? God ain't looking about, God's not looking at how much you give. God's looking at how you give. God, God's looking at how you give. You know that person that gives just to be seen? You know that one that wants their name on the plaque? See, we got to get beyond doing only that which brings us pleasure and, and puts our name up in life. You know, when you give, the scriptures say, when you do it and uh, when you give secretly, God rewards you openly. God says everybody don't have to see God. Everybody don't have to know. You don't have to print out your report and put it on the bulletin board so that everybody will know that you were the biggest giver in the church. God knows. And God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let, let me get to this real fast so I won't bore you. Malachi 3 and 6 it says, I the Lord do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me. And I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Well, we return by doing all that God has directed and instructed us to do. Not just that which is convenient and comfortable to us. He says, Return unto him. Then he comes right, be right behind him and he asks in third, the, the, the eighth verse. He says, will a man rob God? All right, all right, all right. Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? He says, in tithes and offerings. See, there is a distinct difference between tithes and offerings. There, there is a difference between tithes and offerings. Tithe is 10% of your and my gross. Yeah. Offering is that in which we do over and above the tithe. Yeah. I'm going to say that one more time. Yeah. Tithe is 10% of our gross. Yeah. Offering is that which we do over and above our, our tithe. It is our sacrificial seed that we give. Now, understand this. Some of you will be, may be saying, well, pastor, I'm not there yet where I can do my tithe and an offering. Well, okay, I understand that. I hadn't always been there either. Hadn't always had it in my mind to tithe and give an offering. But now that i come to know it, it's just, my, it's just a very good holy habit that I've developed in systematic giving. But for those who are not quite there yet, please, if you're going to give an offering, Give an offering. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said it last Sunday. Just don't call it a tithe. If you're going to give an offering, say it's an offering. Don't call it your tithe. And I gave a very vivid example last Sunday. And it was simply this. If you're going to give, uh, if you're going to give $10 and call it a tithe, what you're telling God is that your gross was $100. Everything is cool. But if you're going to give $10 and your check was a thousand dollars don't call it a tithe because if you consistently call that ten a tithe and you actually made a thousand God will make that ten your tithe do I need to break that down for you let me, let me just in case some of you missed it if you call in the ten your tithe when you actually made a thousand and you want that ten to be your tithe don't trip when your check is no longer a thousand when it now becomes a hundred and conversely if you are giving twenty and, and no, if you're giving two hundred and, and you want that to be your tithe don't be fooled when God takes you from making about 1200 to making 2000 because you are believing him that he will make your gift your tithe God 
can and God will do it for you. Robbery. God's the, the Malachi asked, will, will a man rob God? Robbery. When I looked it up, it says robbery is the act of an instance of unlawfully taking the property of another by the use of violence or intimidation. The act of or instance of unlawfully taking the property of one another of another by the use of violence and intimidation. And then and it says then to steal is defined as to take the property of another without right or permission and without their knowledge. The key word to the difference is that you do it without their knowledge when you steal. But when you rob, you do it in front of them and they know it. That's why the scriptures say, will a man rob God? Because God sits high, he looks low, he sees everything. So when you're short and try to hold back on God, you're not holding back anything that he don't already see. God knows what it is that we're doing. God knows what it is that we're supposed to be bringing him. So don't think that we're getting over on God. We are robbing God right in front of his face, right underneath his nose and say, God, there ain't nothing you can do about it. Verse 9, Malachi 3 and 9, he says, well, you're under a curse. The whole nation of you because you are robbing me. You know, so many times we always hear about generational curses. When was the last time you heard somebody talk about generational blessings? Generational blessings. You can begin to establish generational blessings in your house right now uh, by you understanding what God has said to do. You can choose today. You can change the direction. You can change the outcome for you and your family. Based on you getting lined up with what God has signed, has assigned and called you to do. God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give back into your bosom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, glory. Oh, Jesus. Tell somebody we're going to break this curse. No, no, no. Tell them like you mean it. We're going to break this curse. We're going to break this curse over our lives and over our family's life because we're going to establish some systematic holy giving principles. Yes, sir. God says in the 10th verse, he says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. That's it. Bring the whole tithe all 10% of it into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. God says, test me in this. Test me in this. He says, and then when you test me, God says, and then I want you to see if I will not throw open the floodgates. Glory to God. Boy, when I read that, I, I really did get excited. It's, so, it's something about just reading the basic scriptures over and over that gets the old preacher like me excited. He says that, and, 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 and test me in this. And then when you test me, you're going to see that I'm just going to throw open the floodgates. Have you ever looked at Hoover Dam? Have you ever been to Niagara Falls? And, and, and you see all the water just standing on the other side of this big old iron or cement wall that's standing up there. And then you just happen to be there on the day that they open the dam up. And, the, and when they open the dam up and the walls move back, how the water just gushes out there at you. That's what God says. If you just bring me the tide into my storehouse, he says, I'm going to pull back the walls and allow what's behind the walls to just gush, to just gush on you. And it's going to come so fast that you're not going to have room enough to receive it. God said, I'm going to throw open. He, he 
He didn't say I'm gonna ease it over. I'm, I'm gonna take my time. Because see, sometimes when when it when he just takes his time like this, we start thinking that we doing it. We start thinking that it's that extra hour and a half that we worked overtime. We, we start thinking it's that second job that we picked up when, when it's real slow. But God says, I'm just going to. He says, I'm going to open up, throw open. I'm going to throw open the floodgates. And, and there, you, it's going to overtake you. And you won't have room enough to receive all that I want to bless you with. I'm going to get it right out of your way. Watch this. I'm going to get out of your way. The tithe causes the window to open. The tithe causes the window to open. You can stand in front of a closed window all you want to. With the wind blowing hard on the other side and you just stand in front of that closed window watch the leaves blow watch the dirt fly watch the trees bend but until that window comes open you never get a chance to enjoy the breeze that God's allowing to flow your way so I just want to challenge somebody in this house on this day so just open the window and let the blessings of God just come and overtake you. But the, see, this is how some of us be behind the behind the window, just wiping sweat. Oh, it sure is hot in here. Everybody else said, out there, boy, it feel good. Here you <laughs> Try, can't, can't figure out why. Yeah. You sweating like you sweating. Your window ain't open. Yeah. 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 Open the window. Yeah. 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 <laughs> See, back in the country. Y'all know I was going there. Back in the country. It was something about you couldn't get a good night's sleep until they also say crack the window. They didn't break the window, they just cracked the window. They, they raised it up just a little bit and when they raised it up ever so slightly, you begin to feel that breeze just begin to blow across your face. Can I just drop this in your spirit real fast? God just told me to tell somebody just crack the window. Just crack the window. Just crack the window. Just, just crack the Tell your neighbor, crack the window. 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 God says if you just bring it, they says, I'm going to throw open the floodgates and I'm going to pour out a blessing that you won't have enough to receive it. See, in teaching this, I understand. I understand. In teaching this, some folks don't like it. Because you view teaching like this as pastors trying to get something from me. No pressure. That's because you're looking crossways. You need to look at it the other way. I'm not trying to get nothing from you. I'm trying to get something to you. Even if I was on the other side of the window. I couldn't get nothing to you unless the window was raised. And that's the reason that a lot of folk in this house can't get something from the other side because their window is closed. They won't open it and won't dare let nobody else open it. But in order for your window to get open today, the Bible declared that you've got to bring ye all the time not just a portion, not just that that you want in the have. Tell your neighbor all the time. 
bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Then he says, and prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts. Then he puts his hand on his ear, grabs his hip and say, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I just need somebody in this house today to just reach down and throw up the window. Just reach down and throw up the window. You've been letting folks sit on your window long enough. You've been letting your husband close your window. You've allowed your wife to close your window. You've allowed your children to close your window. You've allowed stuff and things to close your window. But you made up your mind this day. I'm gonna open my window because I want a blessing from God. I want God to do in me, with me, and through me everything that he desires to do. I want my window open. I want my blessing from the Lord. I want to hear him say well done. I want to sit at the welcome table. I want to get from God the very thing that he says belongs to me. God says this day you will establish a holy habit of systematic giving. And God says when you establish it, watch me just throw open. Watch me. Terry, you ain't seen God bless your house yet. Watch him. Deacon, 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 uh, Deacon, uh, Deacon Plumber, he ain't did in your house yet what he want to do. Watch him. Brother Allen, he ain't done for your house what you wanted to do yet. Watch him. Sister Trevisia, he ain't moved in your life yet. Watch him. Is there anybody in this house who want to see God just throw open the windows in your life? Don't you dare let somebody close the window in your life. Don't you dare sit down and lock it yourself. Say, this day, I come to bless the Lord. This day, I come to get from God everything that he says he desires for me to have. God says, establish systematic, holy principles of giving.